This week we had so much to look forward to. Our boys volleyball hit off the start of their season. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss it. This week's installment of What's the Word has a variety of events and competitions coming soon around campus. All this and more on the BBN. Both me and Raylan competed in the Acon competition, and we both only found one. You could say we did an excellent job. I thought I was supposed to be one with the bad jokes. Well, keeping it egg themed, Stuco gives us some insight on how the egg hunt went. Here's Ava with Stuco stuff. Hey Bears, Ava Gilbert here. This week was excellent. I know that one cracked you up. This week, Stuco held an egg hunt to prepare for Mr. BHS. 500 eggs were hidden and you all cashed in for amazing prizes. Today is the last day to get your prize, so head to F101 if you found an egg. Our third annual Mr. BHS is coming up. I can't wait to see who will earn the title this year. Mr. BHS will be on Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It will be held in the auditorium and tickets are now available. You can buy tickets for $5 in the bookstore or on GoFan. And I can't forget about our biggest event this year, prom. Prom 2024 will be on May 11th. It will be held at Ashley Castle from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. The theme will be announced in April. Next week is the last week of the quarter and the Fine Arts Assembly will be on that Friday. That's all I have for you this week, and remember, above all, be a bear. As Black History Month comes to a close, Anasia has a final exclusive for you all. Hi, I'm Anasia. This is my Black History Month Town Hall, where I interviewed some of our black students here at Basha about their culture. Black History Month is a month to remember who came before us and laid the foundations for us to be here today, standing proudly and strongly as young African American and black people. It's up to us to kind of talk about our struggles and what we've been through and not let um, history kind of be erased. And it's up to us to kind of keep solidifying these points and keep talking about ourselves to educate other people. It shows like how we started from like the bottom and got to the top and how we are like from like slavery to here now. I look up to Rosa Parks. I know that's very basic, but what she did really did change people's ways and people's thoughts. I really look up to my sister because she has gone through a lot of hard things. She has so much perseverance and she's super determined to reach her goals and have a good future for her. I love Beyonce because she inspires me to really embrace my culture and our history and use that and turn it into art and I really think that's great. I'm trying to like start a clothing brand so that uh, I can put like cultural figures or like show like the struggles on like clothing because fashion really uh, introduced me to a lot of black history. I feel like it's all in the mindset, so if you want to get to know about other cultures, you can, because it's all in the mindset. I think that today in this day and age, you can simply just go on TikTok or YouTube or really any platform and just look at stuff there, look at black history characters and just familiarize yourself with those people and see how they affected your lives today. I love running. I've been running since third grade. I've been running track since third grade. Um, I just recently started playing basketball. This is my first year. I am a big music listener, and while that, like, while I'm listening to music, I'll crochet at times. Let's not judge. I do like to crochet. I think it's really fun and also really calming too. Just trying not to fit into the stereotypes. Just trying to show that I can be like up with. Uh, the top of the top. I'm trying to make a better image of black people because a lot of people think that we're ghetto, we're, we're gangster, we're bad, we don't know how to behave, but that's not how it is. I'm Haitian and I'm not from here, so I really want to connect with my culture because I moved to America at a young age, so I want to get to know the culture and the language and um, the people.
I am going to Nigeria every couple of years with my family and just checking up on things there, seeing family there. I feel like Black History Month is a great time for us to come together and embrace our culture and teach others and learn about our past and also what we can do in our future to kind of maintain this legacy. Now, we may be getting closer and closer to the end of the quarter, but that doesn't mean this campus is slowing down. Let's see what's going on this week with Nico in What's the Word. What's up everybody, I'm Nico, and I'm excited to tell you that we have plenty of news and plenty of syllables for you. This week's word is corticostriatal thalamocortical, a circuit in the brain that controls movement execution, habit formation, and reward. Tonight Bears is the host of Walkathon. Be there for a great cause and be there for great fun. As you guys may know, HOSA is hosting a walkathon this Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. in the Basha Courtyard. Tickets start at $10 in the bookstore and $15 at the door. All of the proceeds collected through ticket sales and donations will go directly to the National Marrow Donor Program, which is the largest bone marrow registry in the world that helps to match patients with leukemia or other blood cancers to someone who can give them a bone marrow transplant. It's a really, really fun event. There will be raffles, prizes, games, and food. So you guys should show up and have some fun, and then also you can get service hours for walking if you need them. We hope to see you guys there. Theater is hosting another night of student-directed shorts. You can catch all the excitement on Monday, and here's more information. SDS is our theater company's midterm. It's a collection of different scripts and events we've been working hard on all quarter. We have three wonderful directors bringing three wonderful one acts on stage for you. We've been working really, really hard. It's really, really fun. Uh, tickets are totally free. Uh, the show is Monday, March 4th at 7 p.m. Come support Basha Theater. This past Monday, all of our big brain students got recognized for having a 4.0 GPA. This year, more than 770 students were recognized. They have worked to retain a 4.0 GPA this year and were honored with reciprocated energy by faculty and those who attended. For many, this is a great accomplishment. Oh, it's hard. A lot of these kids are involved. They have groups, they have clubs, they have sports, and they're still able to maintain a 4.0 GPA. It's impressive important for the school to celebrate accomplishments like this because it really an award really pushes students to want to do well and for those who might not be doing so well it can kind of help move them along towards the right path. The more rigor they put into their high school schedule the more success they'll find in college or tech school or in life. I think it, it's appreciated, especially with my family. Um, all my siblings came to Basha, so it's a bit of like a legacy sort of thing um, that we, we all do really well. I, I think this becomes a big deal as the kids get older because the numbers start to dwindle. So by the time they're seniors, we always have fewer. So if you're one of the last men standing, then it's kind of a cool thing. So I think it does propel them to keep doing better. Our jazz band was just jazzing this Tuesday. They were smooth. Take a listen. On March 7th, the Build for Tomorrow Expo is being held at Chandler High School. It's an opportunity to network and connect with employers, businesses, and trade schools. Everyone, keep an eye out. From 5 to 7 p.m., come to Build Your Tomorrow. FFA students participated in various different competitions to test their agricultural capabilities. I competed in horse evaluation on Friday. Uh, we judge four different classes to our riding classes, where we judge how the horse acts with the rider, and to our halter classes, where we judge the horse on its conformation and its structure. Um, basically, I'm being judged on how I judge a horse. I give two oral reasons explaining to the judges why I placed the class the way I did. We look at a horse's 
body structure and their muscling and we determine which horse is the best out of the class. There's typically four horses in one class so it's a lot of fun. I love doing it. On Friday we competed for nursery landscape and what that means is that we had to identify about 200 plants and be able to know how to identify them based on their leaves and other characteristics. We also had to identify the plant disorders and what's wrong with them, how to cure them. Plant selection with scientific names, also plan reading on how to read landscape plans. Overall, we placed fourth, Basha, and I placed eighth individual. I did the agronomy competition where you basically have to uh, identify crops and weeds based off their characteristics and uh, the seeds alone along with uh, a lot of the leaves and then sometimes the disorders that come along with them. And then we also have uh, plant disorders that we had to identify, insects that we have to uh, remember the name, their life cycle, and then the damage they do along with the mouth part that they have. And then we also had soil composition and texturing that we had to do and that was pretty much the competition. Last but not least, but definitely the shortest, our AMS Math Counts is Fun Club participated in the Papago chapter of the Math Counts competition. A team of four and seven other students came to win. They competed valiantly and won second place as a team. Hari Ganesan earned fourth overall. Congrats, AMS Math Counts. Well, that's everything I got for you guys this week. Thank you for tuning in and make sure everybody lock in for spring break. Our boys basketball team has proven that they came to play and never plan on giving up. All their hard work that they put in this season has paid off. Let's see how they played on Wednesday in the Grizzly Grind. Here's Skyler. Hey everybody, I'm Skyler Meister for the Grizzly Grind. Here are your scores and highlights. Boys basketball has made it to the final four of the Open State Championship with two very exciting games. Hey everybody, I'm Jaden Reckon, and tonight we're here at the Open Division Final Four where the Basha Bears will be taking on the Perry Pumas. We'll get to that in a second, but first, how the Bears got here. Last Friday, Basha took on the Desert Mountain Wolves in the Open Division quarterfinals in what would be a nail-biter. The first half was back and forth, featuring some incredible shooting by the Wolves' Kayla House, And with just six seconds left in the half, things got crazy. Mason McGee's buzzer beater would end the half with a score of 36-35 Wolves. And as the night crawled on, the Bears made their grab for the lead one shot at a time, taking a 47-46 lead with this bucket from Elijah Summers Livingston. By the middle of the fourth, that lead grew to double digits with the reverse layup from Christian Warren. And as the game came to a close, McGee and Summers Livingston had one last nasty play. After the game, the Bears punched their ticket to the semifinals against their number one rivals, the Perry Pumas. Now, on to tonight's game, where the Bears are going to try and take down Rockstar recruit Owen Heat and his Pumas. It started loud and did not let down as the two teams traded shots. The tide started to turn near the end of the first when the Bears entered a shooting slump and Perry capitalized going up by 13. When the second quarter started, Basha only had scored eight points, but they started to get hot with the help of Mason McGee's step back three. They ended up going on a 16-4 run, bringing the score within one at half. Walk out, you can't stand and watch. They got guys going to it, and then they got a big monster who'll just jump over you. We've got to eliminate him right now, and he may, we may not get that rebound, but we got four of the guys who better get in there. No freaking excuse. Ain't no freaking excuse. You better fight your off. Okay, let's go now. Let's go. And now, the stage was set for a competitive second half. In the third quarter, Mason McGee put the team on his shoulders, hitting this three to tie the game at 27. Later on, senior Sam Zanoni stepped up big time and hit two threes to bring Basha within four. Unfortunately, in the fourth, Koa Pete and the Pumas were too much for the Bears to handle. And as the clock ran down, so too did the hopes of Basha. The final score of the night was 63-46, and afterwards, we caught up with Basha head coach Michael Grothaus about the game. Yeah, it's not the result we wanted. I mean, Perry, Perry played a great game tonight. You know, they just outplayed us. Um, give them all, all the credit. Uh, they did a good job. Koa Pete was, uh, you know, best player in the country tonight. I'm just proud of our seniors. They did a heck of a job over the last four years for our program. And so, but just proud of our group. 
I'm Jaden Ricken for BBN Sports. Thanks, Jaden. In the 32nd Adam Donenfield Tournament, our baseball team won two out of the four games they played. They opened here at home on Monday against the Queen Creek Bulldogs. In the bottom of the first, Landon Dabrowski hits to left field, bringing in Gavin Smith. Basha up, 1-0. Falling behind, the Bears tie it up in the bottom of the third. Carson Augustini out to left field, tying the game 2-2 by bringing in Max Madrid. In the bottom of the fifth, Max Madrid, with a shotgun out to left field, gets the last point of the night, giving Gavin Smith the run from first base all the way to home. The final score was 3-2 Bears. Traveling away from home, the Bears took on the Vikings at Sunny Slope High School on Wednesday. Harvard commit Gavin Smith, contributing to the runs, had one RBI. They lost 7-3. Bears have a busy schedule next week. Be sure to catch a game. The softball team traveled to Queen Creek High School on Wednesday. The final score was 3-2. Kendall Bragg finished the game with two RBIs on the night. On Wednesday, the Bears faced off against the Vikings. The girls came to play, dominating Sunny Slope 12-4. Shout out to Addison Case who helped the team with three RBIs. Be sure to watch them play next week in their upcoming games. Last Saturday, track and field competed in the Richard Thompson South Mountain Classic. The boys placed third and the girls placed fifth overall. The boys were led by Colin Baldwin in shot put who reached a new PR and Connor Form in the javelin. The girls were led by Kayla Lark in the 1600 meter who also reached a new PR and Paris McGee in the triple jump. Congratulations to all our track and field athletes. Our beach volleyball team took on the Corona Del Sol Aztecs on Wednesday. The girls could not pull out the win, losing 3-2, with a great showing from Mia Theisler and Riley Woods. The girls play twice next week. You don't want to miss it. The boys volleyball team bump into the start of their season playing against the Trevor Brown Bruins. Following the serve, Jaren Sibley tips the ball. Evan Lemmer with the decoy gives Dalton Torville the set. The final score was 3-0 Bears. They compete this weekend in the 2024 Saints Classic, playing their first game against the Cactus Shadow Falcons tomorrow at 9 a.m. Heading over to tennis, our boys team faced off at Mountain Ridge High School against the Lions on Tuesday. The Bears lost 8-1 with an amazing performance from Alan Liu, who won his singles match. They also took on the Desert Ridge Jaguars on Wednesday. Bringing back their energy, the team dominated the Jaguars 7-2. Here are their upcoming games. Be sure to check them out. While the boys were away, the girls defended the Den against the Lions. The girls had better success with a final score of 6-3 Bears. Battling against some Jaguars, they also played on Wednesday. They continued their win streak, winning 9-0. Jordan Mee dominated her competition in both games, winning both her singles matches. In case you want to catch a game, here is their schedule. That's all for this week. I'm Skylar Meister for the Grizzly Grind. Hey, wait a second. Where did Gavin go? Today, I'm at the Santan Mall, and I have a few questions I wanted to ask the people at Gilbert. Let's see what they had to say. Who am I here with today? Eric Yunker. Jason Kirby, what is the best movie you've seen this year? This year? Well, 2024? Definitely not The Hunger Games. I saw, well, was that this year? I'm trying to even remember Yeah, that was this movies. year. That was this year? Okay. Um, I went and saw Wonka recently. I thought that that one was good. Oh, was that good? good. Yeah, okay. It was very, like, I don't even know, magical, I guess. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen a movie this year yet, but I have seen The Chosen, which okay. is a series. Was it pretty is, good? Yeah, really good. Okay. But 2023 was Oppenheimer. That was pretty good. Yeah. Now, Oppenheimer or Barbie? I need to know. <laughs> I've never seen Barbie yet, but um, I'm more of an Oppenheimer guy. Okay. Now, what is your favorite movie of all time? That's a tough question. Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> that, I love Kung Fu Panda, <laughs> man. Now, is it one, two, or three? Number one, always. Oh yeah, that's yeah. the best one. Interstellar. Interstellar? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Also directed by Christopher Nolan, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so what is your most anticipated movie of the year? Ooh. Well, I don't know if it's coming out this year, but there's uh, a Deadpool, Deadpool and oh, Wolverine. Oh, Deadpool, yeah. I'm excited movie. for that one, yeah. too. Yeah. I am really looking forward to Dune. 
the, Dune the, two? Yeah, Dune 2. That's I haven't out. seen the first one. Is it good? It was really good. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to check the it out. The building though. is like super interesting. You know, I like how they incorporate science into the, like, mm -hmm. the thought process. Yeah, and it's got a lot of good actors in it. Yeah. Yeah. Oscar Isaac, he's honestly my favorite actor. Yeah. yeah. Now, what is the worst movie you've ever seen? Worst movie? Uh, I think it's called Sharknado. Oh, I've seen that one. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, bad. Pretty bad. Yeah. Pretty bad. Um, I don't know. I think Choppy has got to be up in the list. Um, do you prefer to watch movies at home or at the theater? Mm. Depends on the movie, but I, I do enjoy the theater. And okay. it sucks that they're they're having problems right now. Yeah, it really sucks there. that they're kind of like phasing it out more for streaming yeah. services. Yeah. It's kind of a, it, it depends, right? It's like, mm. if I'm going for the sound, I'll go for the theater. Um, but if it's more just like the plot or visuals, actually visuals, honestly, I'll go to the theater too. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time I'll stay at home just because it's cheaper. Yeah. Well, that's all for this week. Also, don't forget to check out all of our socials for special behind the scenes footage and to check out updates on our new podcast. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.